Hi everybody, welcome back to another PUBG video. And I'm a couple of days late with this one, but I thought it was worth addressing anyway. And that is the dev letter about matchmaking for normal matches in PUBG. So, yes, yeah, very exciting, very um, controversial issue matchmaking in lots and lots of games where it's been introduced over the last several years. So it's going to be interesting to see how PUBG are going to address it. Um, so generally the idea of matchmaking is that it is a way that you can get sim similar skilled players to play together. So the idea behind it, why would you have matchmaking? It's player retention. So that when the new player joins the game, they can play against other new players and they can have a reasonable time. They can survive for a reasonable amount of time. They, get, they can get kills. They're not coming up against players that have put 10,000 hours into PUBG. Similarly, as you get to sort of medium-skilled stuff like that as well, it means you're not having to play these, these really good players. The problem with it, well, the problems that matchmaking can bring is that the fact that it makes it more difficult for better players because better players don't have um, lesser players in the matches with them, which means that you know it becomes more difficult for them to play. It often can introduce delays into the lobbies of games, it can often inc increase the ping or the lag in games because if you're not basing your lobbies and your games and your collection of players on how close they are together with the idea that if geographically they're closer, you'll have less lag so that you'll have a better game playing experience. If you're if you're basing that, that lobby of players on, on their skill, then you have more lag as well. Um, and yeah, and so it can make it more difficult. So the idea is the... the the uh, the more the better you get in the game, the harder the players you have to play against. Now you could argue, well, you know that's that, that's tough. You know, if you're better at the game, you should play against better players, shouldn't you? The other thing that I think matchmaking that, that devs don't really always talk about with matchmaking that it can be used for as well is that it is a way of dealing with cheaters, because if you're a cheater in a game, generally you'll be. A, the reason why you do it is to get better skilled so you have better aim you can tell where other players are so generally you'll finish higher up and you'll win more games so if you have skill based matchmaking where the best players and the players with the best results are kept separate from the majority of the rest of the players in the game well that's going to be the cheaters isn't it that they're going to end up all playing against each other however what they did then do is they do something called reverse boosting so that you make sure that actually for a few games you're really crap um, and that would reduce your rank and so you end up playing with other players as well so you know, it's, it's an interesting thing that can happen and then what you have with then what you get with reverse boosting you then get players who you, you, you know you're playing uh, as a beginner but you're you end up playing against these really advanced players who are reverse boosted or they then turned on their cheats and they're playing against you um, Call of Duty has had this debate for many years um, and personally speaking I tend to find tend, my uh, view about matchmaking is it, it works when there's enough players so if the player base is big enough whereby it doesn't affect the ping of the game so the lag then I think match, uh, matchmaking is a good idea I don't think it should be a substitute for Antitude um, I know PC, it's really PC PUBG that's got the biggest problem with, with cheating at the moment there are problems in in console but, but at least with console it's things like uh, people having macros on controllers or using uh, devices where they can plug a keyboard and mouse in and, and things like that rather than actual script based cheats that are running on a console that are giving people radar and and auto aim and things like that although <laughs> probably that that is coming too so there's lots of things going on on with this and remember in the heyday of multiplayer gaming which you could say you know say with PUBG back in 2018 2017 or maybe with Call of Duty you know back in you know 2013 or something with with COD Modern Warfare 2 there was no matchmaking there you know it's something that's come around recently um, as again as a way of, of retaining players because it means that you know if you're if you're an average player, you just play against average players and you don't get your butt kicked all the time. So anyway, that's enough of my preamble about matchmaking. Let's see what the PUBG devs have got to say. 
Hello players, last month we outlined in our 2024 roadmap that we're committed to enhancing the matchmaking experience for a healthy gaming environment and are promised further details on our plans. Today we're excited to share insights into our upcoming matchmaking updates. This dev letter marks the beginning of an ongoing conversation as we work with our players to create the optimal matchmaking experience. We'll discuss the matchmaking system for the normal match mode. So let's delve into its intricacies, improvements underway and our future roadmap for matchmaking. Normal match matchmaking. Matchmaking for normal match works by intimately connecting the follower and following elements. Platform, player count, time to match, ping, skill, party type, and the map surface that's running. Platform. PUBG's matchmaking considers the unique context and attributes of various platforms on PC and console. To ensure smooth matchmaking, we support cross-platform play between Steam and Epic Store on PC and between Xbox and PlayStation console. So there's no PC Xbox, PC or console crossplay, which is excellent. That's where Call of Duty has fallen down by having crossplay, because the walled garden of console means that okay, so we might have a different version of P uh, PUBG that where the updates are slower and the game doesn't look as good, but at least we don't get PC cheats. Player count with matches accommodating up to 100 players, the player count is a crucial factor. We ensure that an adequate number of players are secured and linked in every match. Time to match. This refers to the duration between cl clicking the play button and entering a match. Maximizing player recruitment for each match might result in a waiting period and we strive to establish optimal wait time to avoid excessive delays. Under certain circumstances, such as during off-peak hours, bots may substitute players insufficient players available. Fine by me, I think I cannot believe that PUBG still has, is it the minute and a half countdown they have? So when it gets to like 75 to 80 players in the lobby, you then have another countdown where you have to wait. I think it should be, as soon as it gets, as soon as it gets to 70 players in the lobby, it should be a 10 second countdown, 10, 9. Other players ca can join during that time. Um, and even, you know, onto the plane, you know, when the plane starts before it gets into the circle. Actually, 70 is probably too low. 75 players. Um, and then fill the rest of the match up with bots. I've got no problem with bots, you know being in a game because they're easy to kill just have easy to kill bots that are, are wandering around that generally will disappear after the first couple of um, phases of the circle but speed it up i always look back and remember when fortnite um introduced this change right at the beginning of fortnite because there was a time when we didn't have pubg on playstation we didn't have any battle royale all we had was fortnite so we played fortnite for a while and Fortnite had long lobby, long lob wait lobbies like PUBG did. And then all of a sudden they did the update when it went from having to wait for like a minute and a half, two minutes for a game to, to literally you would get into the lobby and the countdown would start and you'd be into a match. And it's much, much better. You don't mind dying as much when you don't have to wait as much. Ping. Ping indicates the delay between the server and the client, a critical aspect of ensuring a seamless gaming experience. When experiencing low network speed, players will encounter obstacles that diminish the enjoyment of the game, such as difficulty in looting or shooting accurately. To mitigate the impact of network latency and gameplay, we organise our servers by region. Well, yeah, they do that already. Ping is king. Um, yeah, so you, you know you don't want ping because what the, the worst thing about ping is is that it increases often your time to kill. Um, but decreases your time to die. So what that means is when you're shooting at someone, it seems like it takes loads of bullets to kill them, and yet when you get shot, you die straight away. Or people shoot you when you're behind cover. Or you think you've shot someone and they don't die. That's all down to ping. Map service. With the addition of Rondo last December, we now have 10 maps available. Providing all maps at once could dis diminish the matchmaking experience for players. See, what they're giving us is they're giving us all the things they're thinking about, not, not what they're going to do party type so whether you've got solo duo squad skill the skill of a player a player's skill level is determined, determined by various factors such as match kills placements and other criteria it's also categorized by an internal system known as mmr matchmaking rating first step for matchmaking in 2024 here we go revamping the mmr system for normal match with up to 100 players per match assuring an adequate pool of players for matchmaking is paramount previously our focus was primarily on securing enough players while skill-based matchmaking proved effective with sufficient players having fewer players led to increased difficulty for newcomers or less experienced players of course because there's no nobody new coming to the game so you just have existing players who are all good I, or returning players i found this problem 
since you know returning i've played a lot of pubg over the last couple of months and a solo pubg and i found it very very difficult to to, to win very very difficult everybody is very very good now in fact I didn't. I haven't won in ages. And normally, if I play twenty games of PUBG, I can probably get one win. What's that? A five percent win rate. Um, and I haven't had any. I've I've got close a few times, but I haven't had any wins. Observing these outcomes, we acknowledge the need to prioritise skill-based matchmaking alongside player recruitment. In 2023, we initiated initiate improvements to address matchmaking disparities for inexperienced players and players whose MMR was set higher than their skill level under certain conditions. After diligent monitoring, we observed notable improvements in the targeted segments with players in these categories consistently returning to the game. Building on this experience, we've opted to overhaul the MMR system in normal match, building on the steps we've taken to ensure that players experience matchmaking that ma matchmaking matches their skill. Okay, yeah, good. So they, so they did do matchmaking before... But they're saying they're overhauling it. Or are they... Ref they're not referring to ranked, are they, previously? Refining the matchmaking system. Currently, we're focused on enhancing skill-based matchmaking rather than solely increasing the number of players per match. Okay. We've revamped the skill-based matchmaking system to improve the gaming experience for a broader range of players. While over overhauling the MMR system, we've carefully considered various factors to better segment player groups based on their experience in normal match. Our efforts aim to preserve the essence of the normal match experience, particularly for seasoned players. So they're kind of contradicting each other, contradicting each other here. Because if they're saying they want to make it better for inexperienced players, that's going to make it worse for experienced players, for seasoned players, because they're going to have less new players to kill. <laughs> Additionally, we continuously monitor the network latency in each region, assess matchmaking duration, and analyze metrics like the distribution of matches based on skills, skill levels. Drawing insights from this data and player feedback, we are continuously refining the matchmaking system. By enhancing skill-based matchmaking, we aim to cultivate a positive gaming experience for all players and ensure fair competition among players of similar skill levels. Yeah, and, and the big catch, though, is that if you make skill players have to fight in games that have more skill players they won't like it <laughs> they won't they never do <laughs> because they it's, it makes the game harder for them that's the problem if you're going to make the game easier for one group of player, players logically it has to make it harder for other groups of players it just does there's no way of getting around it this, these represent just a fraction of the changes we're implementing and we remain committed to ongoing monitoring and necessary improvements as we progress. Enhancing the matchmaking environment. We've enhanced our matchmaking structure to better accommodate new and inexperienced players. Thanks to your support, we celebrated our seventh anniversary last month. We've diligently endeavoured to align with your interests and expectations, striving to introduce fresh experience for existing players while enticing new players to join our community. Yeah, there's been lots of new good stuff. It's been great. However, over time, the gap between new and seasoned players has widened, presenting challenges in helping new players improve their skills and have fun at the same time. Based on diverse data and player feedback, we've refined our categorization and structure to ensure that new and inexperienced players are paired with similar skill level counterparts. We hope this will facilitate a smoother transition for new players into the PUBG environment, fostering positive encounters with comparably skilled players as they progress and refine their skills. See, I don't know why they can't just have... I know we have casual mode, which I haven't played much because you can only play in squads. I don't understand why they can't have the solo PUBG experience where it's one versus 100 bot, well, one versus 99 bots. I thought that was a great way to practice. And then all you could do is you would just turn up the skill level of the bots up until a point where, you know, someone can go, okay, I'm ready now. I'm ready to take on um, real players. You know, I don't under... I personally would play that quite a lot, that. Honestly, I would. Improving the pre-made team MMR algorithm, weighted average algorithm. So this is where things get very, very complicated. How do you have matchmaking where you have squads of players where you ha could have a crap person you know a group we've all like got that group of friends haven't we where you've got a range of skills and if you're maybe in a group of friends where you don't know who the worst player is well it might be you <laughs> i know if i'm with a group of players i'm going to be the worst player when it comes to pubg so how do you balance that 
background. Over the years, our team has continuously refined the MMR system and made several attempts to improve the formula that generates MMRs for pre-made teams. While the introduction of your average MMR formula initially showed promise, it became apparent that skill disparities among players were progressively widening, resulting in imbalanced matchmaking. With update 20.2 in 2022, we introduced the maximum MMR formula for pre-made teams. While this adjustment mitigated some issues, it increased the difficulty for less skilled players who teamed up with friends or acquaintances. New pre-made team MMR formula, weighted average algorithm. To address these concerns, we are scrapping the formula that matches pre-made teams based on maximum MMR. Instead, we implemented the weighted average algorithm, which weighs the MMR of each teammate, so it's the average. This new algorithm is designed to ensure that when players of similar skill, skill levels team up, their collective MMR is averaged. However, if a team includes a player with a notably higher skill level, the team's overall MMR will be above the average. Additionally, the higher the player's skill level, the more that MMR will be weighted in determining the team's overall MMR. Okay, so it's so it's important when you think about average, averages that there's different types of averages. So you can have an average where you just take four and divide it by you know add up the four skills and divide it by four and then that gives you one type of average you could have um uh, averaging system where you have four um four f four skill levels and the average that, that there's most of would then be the average you know you get, there's not just one type of average you, you can work out in lots of different ways so what they're saying is that if for example you've got someone with a skill of 10 10 and 20 and 30 the actual the 30 would actually count more than 30 they're going to weight that so more it's, so it's more like an average of uh, it would account to the average as if it was a 50 to bring it up that way um, because we we know that solo players you know, really good solo players can win can't they in t in uh, so in um, squads concluding today's level letter Today we discussed establishing a framework for skill-based matchmaking for normal match. Despite its invisible nature, matchmaking is crucial is a crucial component of PUBG as it encompasses many intertwined elements that significantly impact the game's enjoyment and overall quality. While it may take time to satisfy all players, we remain committed to validating the matchmaking system and transparently sharing any noteworthy progress or insights with you as we proceed. Sometimes our plans resonate positively with the community and le yield the out intended outcomes within the game. Other times when our efforts lead to unintended outcomes, your criticism serves as valuable feedback that prompts us to realign our focus. We'll continue to evaluate various data and player feedback alongside drawing from our own gameplay experiences to ensure that matchmaking maintains a healthy balance and appropriately reflects skill levels. We are committed to ensuring that every player eagerly anticipates entering the battlegrounds and we look forward to sharing further updates on matchmaking in our upcoming dev letter. Thank you, the PUBG Battlegrounds team. So they haven't really told us specifically what's happening and um, I'm not sure if they've really told us when it's happening as well. Um, I know I have seen some tweets and stuff saying that that it is started now. Um, I'll have to do a little bit of research and then I'll, maybe I'll put in the notes, the description below this video about whether it's working now. But it looks like they're committed to it. This is a very slippery slope and a very dangerous slope for PUBG because PUBG is not like League of Legends. It's not like some, even something like... Um, uh, over Overwatch, it's not like something like um, Dota where uh, MMR PUBG is a first or third person shooter, competitive shooter, and each interaction between players generally is about shooting at each other, and that experience um, is really controlled by the ping or the lag, or they call it the, like the network speed as well. Um, as to whether each of those interactions is a satisfactory fair encounter where it's seen as fair by both players you know the player who died and the player who won that encounter and matchmaking which could introduce more lag into the system and into the games can affect that and make things feel unfair you know, why did i die i was i was shooting that guy for a long time um it's interesting. I know with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, with the matchmaking and that, I thought that was a good thing. Um, 
mainly because I did pretty well in the multiplayer in that, and I felt that it was keeping me in games where um, I was against people of similar skill level, and I was doing okay, which was pretty good. But the big problem with with Call of Duty is is lobby wait times as well now. With Modern Warfare Three, it takes forever because they disband lobbies, and they and you've got to wait while they create another lobby and, and do the matchmaking for that. Um, yeah, so so we'll we'll have to see. I, I think this is not a substitute for when it comes to PC PUBG. This is not a substitute for a real proper effort to get rid of cheaters um, in the game. Um, I, but I think this is mainly this is what this is used for. Um, that you know you'll take that top say twenty five percent of players on PC of which maybe a big chunk of them are cheaters and you have them playing against each other <laughs> playing against each other because obviously with matchmaking where where it's based on skill you don't have to detect cheats you're just going um, off what people have achieved and generally if you're using cheats you will achieve more than other people but I just really hope this doesn't slow down the lobbies because the lobby creation in PUBG is um, is it's it's too slow as it is so what would i do how would i how would i do i think ultimately the ping should be king uh, in a game where you have to have 100 players in a lobby um, and speed of creating that lobby is incredibly important as well so your game should come together quickly and it should be you want the least ping between the players the way that you create an environment that is fun is by having a um a good mix of skill sets and as a game gets older, you know, when PUBG is seven years old now, you have to try and keep getting new players into the game or get people coming back to the game so that you don't just have a game full of people that have been playing it for the last, solidly for the last seven years who are very good at it. The other thing I think they really have to consider is, is, is the skill um, ceiling, I think, and the things that makes... A good player now what, what what makes a good player now you know i mean how do you be a really good player and are the things that they are doing um are they kind of against the way that the game should work and a, a lot of this for me is recoil control i think um and when you see players that have got such good mouse or controller control and these aren't the ones who are using cheats who can use a four times scope or a three times scope, or a six times scope even, with a fully automatic weapon, and use that weapon on fully automatic, and control it enough um, to be able to hit multiple hit targets, well, to hit the same target multiple times, fully automatic, a, a long way, because they can just control the recoil in a way that you shouldn't be able to do. I think that that's, that's a way that you could uh, definitely look at it, and say, okay, well, we really need to look at the way that recoil works in this game. Um, and people shouldn't be able to control recoil in the way that they do. Um, you should be able to control it to a certain amount through to skill, because that would kind of reflect the way that in real life you would get better with guns, wouldn't you? But someone cannot put a sick time scope on an M4 and then fire it fully automatic and hit things. Or even hit people... The, the, the big bugbear for me is hitting people from... Um, moving vehicles you know if you are in a car you should not be able to lean out of a window and have a chance in hell of hitting someone even if that person is standing still if that car is moving it should be incredibly difficult it should be much easier for the person who is standing still to hit the person in the car rather than the way around or even when you know when you get people who are in the micro lights flying around it should be virtually impossible for that person to lean out of that vehicle and hit someone and kill them on the ground it should be really really impossible it should be much easier for the person on the ground who's standing there on the solid earth crouching down firing up and, and hitting them so i think that's what they should look at because that often is the big difference when i get into firefights it's it's the way that people um can control recall and can kill you from a long distance but the other the main thing is to keep new people coming into the game or get and also get people returning to the game as well but what do you think about um skill-based matchmaking you know the proof will be in the pudding wasn't it pubg's got good numbers on pc anyway where you can check it there does still still seem to be there's lots and lots of people playing um it's still like in the top five steam games played more but they've had some good percentage games uh, gains over the last few months as well 
Um, and it, you know, you can get games on console as well. I play on Xbox, and that seems to be okay. So, what do you think? Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful. If it has been, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.